Welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 116 Actions. This will actually be a series of four videos. In this first one I'll explain what actions are and show you a couple of them working. And then I'll have three separate videos that show the three major types of actions. And uh, I broke it apart because of the length of one particular video. And some people may not care about, say, reporting actions, but they may be interested in drill through actions and therefore they can watch just the pieces that make sense to them. Well, let's take a look first of all and discuss what actions are and, and then take a look at some of them actually uh, in action, if you will. Actions are pieces of functionality that you can embed in a cube and users can then execute those when they're looking at the data. And what this really does is allow you to tie a cube to other systems potentially. For example, I may be looking at data and I can launch into a report that I have in reporting services. I can pull up another application in my business that I might access through a URL by pulling up that particular application and passing the parameters that I need to. I can also run queries and get data sets back and work with those as necessary. So there are a lot of things that I can do with actions. And, and again, this is really the way to tie your cube analysis to other systems in the organization. So an action can target a, a number of different things. I can target, for example, uh, the last thing you see there is an entire cube. So one action can be basically visible anywhere in the cube. It can also be visible to an entire hierarchy, just a level within the hierarchy, or just a particular attribute if I don't have that as part of a multi-level hierarchy. I can even have it enabled in just a single cell if I want. I also can then have it tied to the members of either a, an entire dimension, the members of a hierarchy, the members of a level, or the members of a single attribute. And that actually is a fairly common thing, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of that coming up here in just a moment. Now, with an action, there are several different types and there are actually three different buttons for creating actions inside of BI Dev Studio. And those three buttons are for drill through, for reporting, and then what's called a standard action. And standard actions are interesting because there are actually many different types of standard actions. You can see here data set, row set, proprietary statement, URL, HTML and command line. Now I should point out uh, for whatever reason HTML and command line are still supported but they don't show up in the UI so you'd actually have to create some other type and then manually go edit to the XML file. Not exactly ideal but it does work. And let me describe what these different standard actions do inside of the standard action video. But let's take a look right now and see what an action looks like once you invoke it and how it works. Here I am inside of BI Dev Studio and this is the full AdventureWorks project that I've opened but I just want to show you those particular uh, actions uh, show you a couple of them and how they work then here in the browser. Notice that I have selected an action called the Internet Details action. This one happens to be a drill through action. Don't worry so much about that. But notice that with a drill through action, I can target a measure group member. And so I could target all measure groups or, in this case, an individual measure group, Internet sales. Within that, I then go and select my columns, and there's a bit of an art to this, but for now, just be aware that I've gone in and selected my columns from the measures group and all of the dimensions, or at least the ones I'm interested in. There are some additional properties down here at the bottom, and those include things like uh, the maximum number of rows. For a drill through action, this is very important, and again, I'll, I'll cover that in the drill through video. But notice here that uh, the caption is simply drill through with uh, an ellipsis after it, the, the three dots. So 
what does that look like? Well, if I go to the browser, I can pick the internet sales, and I'll go ahead and just pick the internet sales amount measure, but it, it would potentially work with any of these other than the calculated measures. Now, if I right click on this, I see drill through appearing in this list. Now, I'm not going to run it here, it will time out, and this is why you would want to limit the number of records. Someone could try this at a very high level and potentially return billions of records, and uh, clearly I don't want that here. So let me go through and take the customer geography, and I'll simply expand this to show the states and provinces within Australia, and then I'll expand that to the cities, the Coffs Harbor, and then I'll expand that, and I'll get the postal code, and expand that, I'll get the actual customers. And let me resize this just a bit here. And notice, for example, that uh, Antonio Patterson has purchased $8,068.03. And if I right-click on the number for Antonio and choose Drill Through, then it grabs for me the actual records that make up that number. And the columns are a little hard to read, but basically here's the internet sales amount number and those will add up then to that uh, 8,000 number. If I happen to scroll over, this is the date that the orders were placed, so you can see it was two separate orders, one in September of 2003 and one in February of 2004, and then there are a number of other columns out here as well. So that's a standard drill-through action. Now I'll return, excuse me, to the Actions tab, and I'll take a look at a slightly different action. This is a standard action. This one is going to show a city map. Notice here that its target are attribute members. Notice I have a wide range of things I can target, and I want to target the members of a particular attribute. And the attribute I'm after is the geography.city attribute. Now, geography.city could still be part of a hierarchy, as I'll show you in a moment. But for any member of that attribute, whether it's in a level or not, uh, this action will work. Notice here there are, a diff there are different types of actions. This one happens to be URL. And what it's doing is actually building a URL. It's going to call maps.msn.com and basically uh, append some values from where I am in the cube currently and build that onto the URL string. And then it will kick that off in the browser. So to take a look at how this is working, I'll return to the browser here and erase everything. And it doesn't really matter in this case if I have a measure or not. But let's say that you are looking at the uh, geography hierarchy from the geography dimension, not customer. And I expand Australia to the states and provinces. And then I'll expand New South Wales. And I'm down to the city level. And I see, for example, Darlinghurst. Well, first of all, back here at the state province, if I right click, uh, I don't see any actions here because this one was targeted at the city level. So if I right click on Darlinghurst, you'll see there is a view map for Darlinghurst. And this is an example of a dynamic caption, one that is using MDX. If I were to click on something else, you'll notice it changes. It just includes the city name in it. But, for example, with Darlinghurst, if I don't know where that is and I want to find out, I can click on the View Map, and this will actually open Internet Explorer with that URL, and it will have formatted it correctly to pass in, but I want Darlinghurst in New South Wales in Australia, and we'll pull that up and show it to me. So I can see here, here is Darlinghurst in the middle, and it is a suburb of Sydney. I can return to the cube, and expand, for example, in South Australia. I don't know where Finden is. I can right-click on that. I have a view map for Finden, and again, it will pop it up and show uh, me, in this case, Finden is right here, and I could zoom out a little bit and see exactly where I am uh, in Australia. So that's just an example of two very simple actions, but you can see how, first of all, I can drill through and get more detail and with a different action, I can launch into another application, pass some values on a, uh, on a URL string as parameters, and 
have it react accordingly. So again, the next videos I will go into in more detail a drill through action, a, uh, an act, a URL action, and a reporting services action.